just take them. Give me a call later to tell me the numbers. Oh, all right. Okay. Aren't you a bit too lax as a supervisor? You should at least take a look at the quantity and designs he took. <sighs> I'm swamped. I've got no time for it all. The customers are my priority. Chung at the other store can check. <sighs> Corruption and embezzlement often occur when supervisors are lax in monitoring and fail to follow guidelines and procedures. This will give subordinates the impression that supervisors won't mind even if the company's assets can easily be misappropriated, therefore generating greed in their minds. When goods are misappropriated, the company's profits and income will also be affected. Supervisors should set a good example and effectively implement the company's policies and procedures so that colleagues and subordinates will know that someone is watching and it's not worth the risk to misbehave. Supervisors must set their priorities right. No matter how heavy the workload is, they can't ignore key procedures that may affect the company's business, for instance, stock control. The company should define clearly the roles and responsibilities of each level and post of staff so that they know their duties and accountability to the company and can play their role in the checks and balances system. To enhance accountability, set out prudent procedures for the receipt and issue of goods, including controls and approving authorities for them, their proper documentation, etc. I don't know how many pairs of sneakers Tony took when he left. Oh, just two or three. It's fine. I'll follow up and put it in the system later. All right, good. Thanks, Chung. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You got five or six pairs, but you're going to record just two or three? That's stealing. Hey, don't call it stealing. The boss stocked up so much. What if he can't sell them all before the craze is over? It'd be such a waste. I'm just helping get rid of them. The shop has so much traffic and so many transactions. It's normal to have a few pairs of shoes missing, and no one will find out that it's me. Staff shouldn't take any chances and then assume that no one will discover their improper acts. Even if there is an oversight at the shop by the supervisor, the company will have an accounting system which could expose the irregularities, and in some cases the malpractices may be revealed in unexpected circumstances. Remind supervisors that they should be accountable for their subordinates' performance, Therefore, they must lead by example and take up a monitoring role. They should give guidance to subordinates and monitor their work to ensure that the company's policies and procedures which have been laid down are duly complied with. Adopt proper security measures to minimize the risks of pilferage of valuable or popular items such as storing them in a locked storeroom or cupboard with access control. There should also be proper supervision and checks and balances. For example, make sure that only authorized staff are given access to the storage area segregate the duties of issuing stock and updating stock records, and install CCTV in the storage area, etc. Assign staff independent of the shop's daily operations to conduct regular and surprise stock checks to ascertain whether the inventory record tallies with the actual stock quantity. This can help detect irregularities at an early stage and, more importantly, keep staff alert. Mineral water delivery! Ah, uh, just over there. Okay. There. Thank you. How can okay, you receive bye. goods so sloppily? You haven't even counted them yet. Nah, we've been using the supplier for a long time. Their deliveries are very accurate and reliable. I don't need to waste time counting stock. And if it's not right, it can be made up next time. Or considered as normal wear and tear, which is something that's expected in every retail store. Hmm, so convenience store staff Angel accepts goods without prudent checking to save time. This may create an opportunity for someone to abuse the system. Even if the supplier is reliable, there's no full guarantee that there won't be mistakes. And to avoid oneself or colleagues finding themselves in trouble because of the suppliers, they should receive goods in a prudent manner. Lay down guidelines on the receipt of goods. Require staff to always verify the goods received against the details on the purchase order, delivery note, or invoice, and unpack and inspect the items if necessary. Require the receiving staff to certify receipt of the goods by signing their name on the delivery note. High-value items should be received by the shop manager. Shop managers, supervisors, or procurement staff can conduct random checks on the receiving procedure to ensure that the quality and quantity meet the requirements. This action will send a message to the staff that any negligence will surely be exposed. Please feel free to refer to the ICAC's Best Practice Checklist on Stores Management for detailed corruption prevention measures on stock control. But Spring Fountain is in the most eye-catching and convenient location, so it's become the bestseller. Well, thank you. I've got these two tickets for a nice film premiere. Take your boyfriend. Hey, Bugman 3, wow! Well, thanks. Hey! Don't you realize this could constitute a corruption offense? No way, corruption? 
How is that possible? I haven't accepted money. He only gave me spare tickets. He's someone I know. And they're only worth $100 or so. I mean, I can accept a gift from a friend, right? It makes no difference which brand of water the company sells anyway. There's no loss of business. Under Prevention of Bribery Ordinance Section 9, if Angel accepts the movie tickets from Chow without her employer's permission as a reward for displaying his goods in an advantageous location in the shop, she will commit the offense of corrupt transactions with agents. The term advantage here has a very broad scope, including money, employment, services, favors, gifts, or anything of the like. The law hasn't specified the maximum value of advantages allowed, the occasions under which advantages can be accepted permissible value and nature of such advantages are up to the employer. To avoid falling into legal traps inadvertently, staff should familiarize themselves with the provisions of the Prevention of Bribery Ordinance and the company's policy on acceptance of advantage. The company should formulate a clear policy on the acceptance of advantage, including a general prohibition of accepting advantages in relation to the staff's duties, the permissible value and occasion for accepting gifts, and the reporting procedures and handling method upon acceptance, etc., with every member of staff required to follow it strictly. To help staff understand the anti-bribery law and company's policy, the company should organize regular training for them and remind them of the relevant guidelines before major festivals during which gifts are traditionally given, for instance, before the Chinese New Year holiday or the Mid-Autumn Festival. To prevent staff from accepting bribes in return for favorable allocation of racks, the company should task staff independent of daily store operations with the drawing up of the planogram based on the criteria set out by the management and require frontline staff to follow it strictly. And those staff that are responsible for the allocation of racks should conduct regular on-site spot checks to ensure compliance with the planogram is being met.